So, Bob, can, uh, congratulations on your first 100-miler. Oh, thanks. Congratulations on yours. So we finished uh, Vermont 100 Sunday morning, early Sunday morning. It's now Thursday, so five days of reflection. Yes. But somewhere where I was planning on doing those races is where I thought a 100 mile was possible. Yeah. And just because it was possible, I, that's why I wanted to do it. This is a big deal. It is. I mean, we knew There's that. There's a lot of people here. Um, I'm the race director here. I'm the one that's been bugging all of you guys with a ton of emails. Sorry about that. Um, welcome to Vermont. We're so psyched to have you guys here. Um, this is the 30th Vermont 100. So we're really excited about this. Morning, Bob. Sun's up. Yeah, there she is. Been nice and cool so far. Yeah. Been a good morning so far. All right. What time is it, Bob? Um, two hours, 30 minutes in. 13 and a half miles. And the first horses are catching us. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Hi. All right, uh, 21 miles in. Bob and I are way ahead of schedule. Love this aid station. This is pretty house aid station. My favorite thing is they have bacon and pancakes. Mm, I already had some. My hands are a little breezy from it. That's a great aid station. Yeah, what a hell of a beard you got going there. Thanks. Why not looking at its optimal right now? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that first covered bridge was, it, it was amazing the smell that came there. Just that, mm -hmm. I love that old wood smell. Yeah. And uh, it was pretty cool. Pretty, yeah. I think it was pretty close aid station was one where they had bacon and pancakes. That was pretty nice. Yeah. And it seemed like leading up to that covered bridge too, kind of ran through a little town. Yeah. And there was, you know, post office and all the, you know, uh, residential area as opposed to most of the rest of the race was just out in the yeah. boonies and in the farm area. And um, this hill was so tough that people were stopping on it and sitting down. <laughs> and um, <laughs> I just decided I was just going to march up this hill uh, at a steady pace and it just kept going and going and going. And it was one of the steepest of the day, which is saying quite a bit. And, uh, anyway, that was that was probably my favorite hill. So we've been going uphill a long time at this point. Probably the last two miles. Yeah, I'd say. And we're still going uphill. A little bit different section of trail. I consider this a Jeep road. We uh Literally walked up somebody's driveway and then headed out on this path. These trees are so beautiful. The scenery just changed pretty dramatically. Whew. Now it looks like we're going back into the nice woods. I greatly prefer the shaded campy to the open, exposed meadows. So, what was the sound of music? So, Just, uh, I mean, the first thing you think, the cover of the film is Julie Andrews spinning around, and that's exactly what it looked like. Wildflowers. Um, maybe a little shorter mountains in the background, but uh, it was absolutely beautiful looking. That, so we came out of Stage Road, 
and we had we hiked up the hill that was pretty much like a ski lift. It was. It <laughs> yeah. was a ski resort. It was a ski, it was resort. A ski hill, yeah. So you come up out of this at the ski resort, and then you pop out of the woods, and it's just this field, and you can just see for, I'm guessing, 50, 60 miles from not. I don't know. Yeah. You can see pretty far from up there, though. Probably 100 miles. Yeah. Probably a 1,000 miles. <laughs> Looks like a horse aid station up here. They did say we were welcome to the water in the horse aid stations. Might have to get some. I am running a little low. Might have some electrolytes in it or something, you never know. Sure. That's a pretty miraculous view. Huge shout out to our crew. There's no way we could have done this without uh, our crew. Uh, Scott, JD, and Keith were fantastic. Um, came out here, cheered us on the whole way. They were there at every aid station, helped us out. And uh, Scott and JD came out and helped pace us those last 30 miles. It was yeah, wonderful. I just don't think I could say thank you enough for that. I mean, I've told them thank you a bunch of times, and I feel like I've still been remiss. <laughs> <laughs> I. What was the craziest part to me that I had, I, I had expected the pain. I had expected the amazing service at all the aid stations. I had expected the great support for it. What I did not anticipate was the overwhelming amount of gratitude and emotion I felt crossing that finish line. Like I was, I was in a pretty emotional state in the standpoint. And just that, that part of saying thank you so much, like so grateful for all the people that helped us get to that point. It's pretty cool. Absolutely. Yeah, I was pretty emotional there at the end too. Tired and sore, but also emotional. Okay, okay, hang on, hang on. Set up right corner on the inside. Okay. Strategy, you're coming up the ski hill. Okay. Next to eight is three miles. Ten bear comes next, all exposed. Yep. No shade. Yep. Ooh. Yeah. Put him in your video. <laughs> no, I think he's dropping it soon. <laughs> How'd you describe the support uh, for the race? It's top notch. Absolutely. Every aid station, um, you know, they had the typical fare, but each one seemed to have, uh, of course, their own little specialty. Spirit of 76, I mean, that was a great aid station. There were so many good ones. Ten, Ten Bear was nice, and then Margaritaville. I don't think I got the full exposure to Margaritaville. Margaritaville. I was kind of in and out of that one. Yeah. Yeah. I, I needed Margaritaville yeah, yeah. a lot, because um, I was hurting pretty bad coming to that. I, I have to say my favorite aid station, in a way, was the last one, yeah. Ollie's, because as you approach it, you know, in the middle of the night, it was probably 3 a.m., Yeah. Um, you know, they got the signs leading up to Polly's, which is, these signs just kind of came like a ghost out of the yeah. darkness, you know, and then uh, reading them point five miles to Polly's and made it sound like there was like really this magical diner that you were going to. So, I'm now at 62.21. So, uh, I uh, now have a new furthest distance. I've run further than I've ever run before. See, what I saw is that it was that it was all a physical thing up until mile 88. And at mile 88, you both got the look in your eyes like, oh, screw it, we're going to finish this thing. I don't care what, kind, <laughs> yeah, what, sure. what I have to do. So Bill's Barn, which is 88, we heard warnings not to lay down on the cots there, not to be seduced by that. But uh, at that point, my stomach was a little upset, and I needed a little sip of beer, so I asked Keith to get us one. 
and he brought it in. <laughs> and I didn't see the reaction, but I guess some of the aid workers didn't didn't think that was appropriate to have a beer there. Yeah, um, one of the aid station workers kind of looked over and uh, spotted it and was alarmed and uh, kind of started to come over and say something. And then I think she even mentioned to one of the other aid workers, like, "Hey, the, we got a problem over here. There's a beer." And uh, just when she was about to. Uh, kind of say something about it, the aid station captain came over and just uh, put a damper on it and said, no, no, it's, it's don't worry about it. He probably was like, problem. these two pitiful souls just need a little sip of beer, let them have it. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I was grateful for that. I mean, I was going to keep drinking it no matter what, but, <laughs> but, you know, if they kicked me out, I was just going to have to. You've had it. plenty of times where you had to get the beer down before they took it away from you. Yeah. Those last two miles of like just really feeling like okay this is going to get it's just kind of this gradual build of emotion like yeah this is happening like we're actually going to get it and the shoot you come down out of the woods and then there's the shoot to the finish line and the race director was there and everybody was there just kind of uh, going through and it just felt so incredible to cross that finish line pretty overwhelming yeah and it was lined uh, about the last half mile with the glow sticks in the um, milk jugs Water right, jugs. Right. Yeah. Which would have been really cool if we'd come in like an hour earlier. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well played on your first hundred. Yeah, yeah you guys killed it. We picked a tough one. Impressed. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Very tough. You thinking about doing another one? Um, well, I do remember <laughs> telling myself during the race... Because um, I knew I would think about doing another one. Yeah. But I remember telling myself during the race, when you have that thought, Bob, <laughs> you can't do it. Don't do it. Don't ever sign up for another one of these. And that was at a time that I was suffering pretty bad during the race. <laughs>